so Fluence is an open application platform. And that's a platform where application can safely build on each other, share data and users without fear of that access being disabled. And that's a critical piece and we're, we're a critical feature and we're gonna go into that in more detail. First, a quick bit on, on, on Fluence. Found in 2017, multiple papers published. Some of you may have heard of us through our D-Web surveys, which we've done for a couple of years and have thousands of developers participate in. Um, and that's, that's kind of a, a unique way we, we sort of built to reach out to people and build ties in the community. We have a functioning P2P network, the Aquamarine language, which is a scripting language, is, is complete. Um, we launched our network on November 12th, um, and you can visit us at fluence.network. Um, question is, what are we doing? Why do we have a need for an open application platform? And if you think about the web, you take a step back. It was designed for interoperability. It was designed to make data transfer incredibly easy. And that was, I think, Tim Berners-Lee's original vision. And that data transfer obviously allowed massive information sharing. What's happened over time, as everybody kind of recognized on this call, is the concentration in several platforms which have devolved the web. And so you have uh, some dominant tech firms that have really um, gathered huge amounts of users, mined their data, built massive developer e teams and ecosystems and made it incredibly difficult for all but the very best applications that are the best capitalized to compete. And so there's a, literally a graveyard of applications that couldn't scale, couldn't develop fast enough, couldn't innovate fast enough and were taken out by these dominant platforms. You see here a list of names many of you recognize. There's hundreds more that never got the scale that we would know. Um, what's stronger though than these big companies? The global U, which is the global developer community. And the global developer community, when unleashed with the right tools, could massively outcompete any one of these big companies. And, and that's what we're enabling. If we take a step back, let's think about what has worked in software and in development. And it has not been the cathedral model. You know, um, Eric Raymond in 99 wrote um, The Bazaar, The Cathedral and the Bazaar. And he talked about how software originally was developed via a very top-down hierarchical system. But the more complex the software you built was, the more overhead was required. And he hypothesized and been proven right that that type of hierarchical model ultimately toppled under its own weight and didn't result in fast development and certainly not great innovation. And so instead, the bizarre model has become the dominant model in software creation. And that's obviously the open source is the, is the, is the um, representation of that. And so we see open source deployed everywhere. And that's where you have independent, um, fairly autonomous actors collaborating in a decentralized manner um, to build what ultimately becomes really useful, really powerful software. That's worked in software. We haven't seen that in applications. And so what Fluence enables is this bizarre model to happen in building applications. Rather than a top-down hierarchical build every single piece you need, it's a collaborative environment that we enable. And so what tools do you need to do that? You need, we think you need three things. You need a distributed compute protocol that allows for trustless hosting and computation that takes the application and divorces it from the author and allows the data and the users to be shared and not have that access not cut off. You also need a very simple programming language that allows you to compose applications from running software incredibly quickly and easily, which we have. And then you need an economic layer. You need a blockchain-based economic layer that tracks software usage and allows rewarding throughout the entire stack and software usage. And we think that last piece is critical. And a couple of people have talked about different elements of it today, but we think that, um, you only really get to scale when there are economics involved. And that is, I think also the way we've done it, we can talk about in detail, is a share of hosting revenue is, goes to the ultimate software authors. And wow. that is something which is um, deployed and we think is, is really the um, kind of the way to make this all work. Quick, how does this work? Let's just visualize it quickly. So imagine you have a white label chat app and you have users represented by laptops. What happens? Well. Some developers could decide to add, you know, some stories to that. One other developers could add stickers. Each of them attract new users. That leaves that bottom app. Now the users of the bottom app have grown. Now you have more users there, right? And then guess what? Someone because it's easily composable, all you do is add new features. Some other people say, you know what? Let's add, let's add stories to it. And then you get more users up at the top. Someone says, you know what? I want to add fancy UIs of stickers. 
and you get a Slack relay. And each one of these different elements is adding more users and is benefiting the original bottom application as well as the intermediate applications. So imagine an ecosystem of applications where everyone can build and innovate on top of anybody else. And so we view this as, you know, we say you can innovate, but you really, you, you are innovated because the applications that you build and are on Fluence are then open for anyone else to add whatever they want and then use that. And so you basically unleash the whole developer world into becoming, um, into building on top of whatever they want using composing whatever applications they want and economics flow up and down through this system. So that, we think it's a, a pretty powerful system. What's our mission? It's to empower the next wave of internet innovation. And we think this could add as much innovation um, as, as open source has done when you just allow people to build experiment incredibly quickly, incredibly cheaply. Um, and that's what, our, that's what our mission is. So go to fluence.network. You've got, we've got a bunch of papers there. Um, join, follow us on, on Twitter, which is um, Fluence Project. Um, I'm the Tom Tro on, uh, on Twitter. Uh, thanks. We have about a minute, 20 seconds for questions. Okay, so I see two questions. Um, I'll just tell you both of them. What if you want to deliver a free to use app on Fluence? The other question is, um, what is your identity model for people in this network? So first, simple. Um, you, the way it works, you create an application that has to be hosted on Fluence that you can you then specify what you want that hosting how much you think should be paid for that hosting if you want to actually charge nothing you can just say it's hosted for whatever people want to host it for and that's it and you take nothing so there's no need to take any share of the hosting revenue at all you could have it go to charity you could have it do whatever you so, so chose but the point as a software author you originally set those parameters and so you can and the important part about this is that don't forget, this is all open source code. And so if someone tries to put stuff on Fluence that's hosted, that has a huge revenue going to the author, someone's just gonna copy it, put it back on Fluence and, and, and have it for far less, right? So this is not a way for open source authors. We think they're not gonna, they're not gonna no one's buying planes or boats with this, right? This is about enough revenue that a small share of the hosting revenue allows people to fund the projects, you know, have code audits, et cetera, that level. It's and support, you know, a family, a small team. It's not about retiring with, uh, you know, in, in Tahiti, so to speak. So that, that, that's an important piece. And in terms of identity, um, um, you know, that that is a, uh, you know, it, it's a decentralized application, right? So we are releasing this and um, we will not be in charge of validating or authorizing identity. It will be out there and people will basically trust based on a trust graph system that we've developed that um, basically judges the trustworthiness to somebody by how many links you have with them and how direct those links are. 